What is up guys, Tom again here from the State of Real and today I'm pulling a little bit of a late one doing some work in the garage, um, porting an intake manifold for an H22. Um, some of you guys might have known, I might have talked about it, may, might not have, but I actually have my intake manifold, which is an H22 intake manifold, fully ported. Um, and I've gotten pretty well known for doing these. Today, I'm gonna try to still continue to port these intake manifolds for you guys, because I've done, I think, like eight so far. And now that I don't have the machines I used to, we gotta adapt and overcome. So I'm gonna use this little jigsaw, it's called a multi-tool, made by uh, Milwaukee. Uh, there's a lot of other companies that make them, and I got my metal uh, cutting blade here for it. And basically, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be cutting out these sections here individually, just to remove that material, and then I'll do a slice down here all the way to the bottom as far as I can go, and then kind of do an angle slice here and take out these solid sections to open all of this up and create more room in the intake manifold. Um, I just wanted to give a little shout out here because I've been trying to do this for a long time and this gave me the excuse. But uh, Justin Miller is a guy that has really gone out and invested in a lot of machinery for the Prelude community and the car community in general. And um, I don't know if he does this <laughs> full time, but he did actually powder coat this entire intake manifold for my friend Zach. And uh, his company is right here. And he also does uh, other little plates and stuff for the interior of the Honda Prelude, but he also made this custom uh, intake plate here that says boosted, programmed, fueled, and, inject and an injection, um, which kind of represents the OEM one that I had to remove when I sandblasted my intake manifold. So Justin, thank you for that. Um, today we're gonna be continuing part of your legacy here and making this into something awesome. So I'm gonna just set up the time lapse here and go ahead and start chopping this apart. Now I do wanna talk about what I'm gonna be doing to blend this later and I'm gonna be using this new uh, half inch belt filer that I bought from Harbor Freight for about 35 bucks. I've used a pneumatic one before, a Dynafile, and I was very spoiled with that because they're great. Um, and I just wanted to try out one of these electric ones since I don't have the compressor capacity to run pneumatics constantly. Um, so that was 35 bucks. And I also bought um, a pack of 36 grit belts. And those are half inch by 18 belts that fit onto the Harbor Freight stuff. And they're made by a company called Red Label Abrasives and they work phenomenally. I've used this before for many years uh, with a Dynafile and I just couldn't go to another brand aside from those. And I bought those from Amazon for I think like $23. So not too bad. All right guys, so it's been about mm, 20 minutes and it's slow going. Um, definitely not as quick uh, with this multi-tool as I thought it was gonna be. At this point, like a Sawzall would probably be faster, but we have two of these cut out here. Just gotta go two more. And then the fun begins down in this section because this is the hardest section to remove. Boom, I kept going and I figured it out. So basically what I ended up figuring out here, as you can see, I am pretty much gutted now. Um, granted, it is almost two hours. Yeah, it's two hours later. Um, but that's not too bad for two hours worth of uh, work there. So um, I don't know where I put it, but I basically, here it is. I basically used my Harbor Freight um, step drill. If you guys can see that. I used my Harbor Freight step drill and I ended up drilling straight down on the solid parts and then sometimes it would veer off to one side and basically what I would do is I would just turn the drill and kind of angle this and kind of use it as a mill and kind of mill out these pieces until I could get somewhat of a weak spot at the bottom here right where I needed it to be and then I just broke it off with a uh, freaking wrench. Just put it down on top and snap, snap, snap. Uh, the belt file has been doing its job. Now I just need to get it down to depth, shape out these bowls and get rid of the uh, 
uh, seams here from the casting. Blend these back so that they go straight to the wall. Blend these pretty far back, almost down to the floor. Biggest thing is you wanna be careful on the center ridge. Uh, you can't blend this completely flat or down to the wall. So um, just keep it, you know, maybe a half inch from the floor. We'll just blend these down a little bit further and then put the knife edge on them. And that will be almost done. But it is uh, 10.45 p.m. and it's time for me to go to sleep because tomorrow's Friday, I still have to work. Um, and I have work to do on my own, own house here. So I'm gonna stand up in my mess of chips and crud and go get myself a shower. I. All right guys, day two of porting the intake manifold for an H22. So should be able to wrap it up today. Let's get to it. All right guys, so it's been about a half hour and I wanted to stop here just to show you my progress so that you can emulate it. Down here, as you can see on the right and left side of the intake manifold, these are now like little cliffs because I've removed all the material and blended this all back towards the wall so it's perfectly flat. So that creates more intake volume um, in this lower part of the intake manifold. And I just wanted to stop here and also tell you uh, another option that I've done in the past. And that is, instead of creating this little cliff here where you blend it back, you would actually do that on your spacer plate. And you can do that because in here it's all solid. There's this little hole and you would just blend it back after that. So what, would, what that would then look like is this little thin area here uh, would just be enough for a gasket, but there wouldn't be this little cliff here and there wouldn't be that little cliff here. So that is also an option that you guys can pursue as well. That's what I have in the Turbo F20B. Um, so there's a lot of intake volume created there. And you can even do the same thing by stacking a second plate on top of here as well, which creates, you know, maximum horsepower. So um, I'm gonna continue on. I got these three in the middle to blend out and we should be done. So back to the tripod. All right guys, so it's another hour and 45 minutes here and I'm pretty much done. This is where I'm at with the intake manifold. So as you can see here, um, all of these are split and just to get a little bit of a close up, these are split and knife edged. This one's split and knife edged and this one's split and knife edged. Everything's blended and it's nice and smooth although it doesn't look like it because it's got the little scratches. Um, but I ran some uh, green scotch bright through here and this can be micro polished so that it's nice and shiny, but that's not my job, that's somebody else's job. Uh, but at this point, this is when you start taking your bolts and um, putting the studs in because you wanna mate up the uh, upper part of the intake manifold with the plate. So I'll put these together and then I'll just blend these bottom parts as best I can here um, and we'll be all good to go. But all in all, um, about an hour and 45 minutes worth of work today, and uh, we're pretty much done. But as you can see, it's real clean looking. It uh, comes in real nice and splits. You got those nice knife edges right there. Picturesque. All right guys, so the time has finally come. Uh, we finished porting the intake manifold. The upper plate is now port matched with the bottom part of the intake manifold. And this is what it looks like. Boom diggity. So as you can see here, here's the line in between the two. It's blended, it's nice and smooth. You can look down on it, it's nice and smooth. Um, so at this point now, all Zach has to do is cut out the intake gasket to fit here and he's good to go. Now, if he wants to polish it up, that's on him. Um, I definitely <laughs> wouldn't worry about it. Uh, but guys, I just wanna, end the video here. It's been almost five hours since the beginning of this job. So it is a very strenuous job, but I wanted to give you guys a video to show you how you can do this at home and what parts to use. Cause you can use this and remember that 
I ended up using this drill and this drill bit, the step drill, and that worked out a lot better than actually my multi-tool. So ending this video, I would just buy one of these band filers from Harbor Freight and get yourself a step drill and use the drill. Just because even my multi-tool um, was overheating a couple times and that'll really kill something battery operated like that or even corded. So I um, hope you enjoy the video. Come back anytime, I'll be here. Until next time, later.